Ah, time to relax and let someone else do the investigating. Howard, play the latest episode of Mystery Morsels. Uh, please. No, but just kidding. How did one bottle of Coca-Cola kill a healthy 22-year-old man? Why would eating a seafood dinner cause a woman to lose all four of her limbs? What was found hiding in a woman's lung causing her constant cough for 28 years? How could one chip unceremoniously end a boy's life? And what was the mistake that one man made that turned his spaghetti dinner into his last supper? All these answered tonight on Mystery Morsels. Uncover the unknown. A seemingly healthy 22-year-old man passed away after drinking a single bottle of Coca-Cola. It was a sweltering hot day, and in the efforts of cooling off, he drank the large bottle of cola quickly. And while he didn't chug it all at once, consuming the entire 1.5 liters in 10 minutes was enough to end in tragedy. When you eat, the nutrients go straight to your liver through the hepatic portal vein. There, the liver sorts and sends these nutrients to where your body needs them, similar to packing and delivering your orders, but for your cells. However, when the young man downed the coke, an unexpected gas buildup occurred. Not long after quenching his thirst, he noticed swelling and felt intense pain in his upper abdomen, so he got himself to the hospital. A CT scan revealed that the carbonated drink had caused some gas buildup within his intestines, which then leaked into his hepatic portal vein. Oh no! The abnormal presence of gas also caused his liver severe damage, having been deprived of oxygen. And after 18 hours in the hospital, the man lost his life. From soda? Biochemist Professor Nathan Davies was skeptical that the Coca-Cola was to blame. The chances of downing 1.5 liters of a regular soft drink being fatal would be very, very staggeringly unlikely. Usually, this type of condition is caused because you have some bacteria that has made its way from the normal gastrointestinal tract to somewhere they are not supposed to be. In this case, in the lining of the small intestine. So it seems like while it's not clear what other factors contributed to the young man's death, it still might be a good idea to watch how much soda you drink. It's okay. All I drink is coffee. Hey, Howard, why did you pop? A 2018 review of scientific journal articles have reported that there have been a total of 92 deaths from caffeine overdose. Howard, I know you're trying to rattle me, but I can't help but feel like this is your way of showing you care. The next story should serve as a cautionary tale for those of us who enjoy undercooking their meat. If you make one mistake, you may never walk again. But before we get to that, ooh, an ad. Here's one mystery that doesn't need solving. What's for dinner? With our sponsor, Cook Unity, the first chef to you meal delivery service. Made up of 70 chefs who believe that great food shouldn't be complicated, especially for those of us with busy schedules. Each week, award-winning chefs craft hundreds of globally inspired meals from vegetarian to paleo and everything in between. Meals are delivered fresh, never frozen, and the menu rotates every week. So there's always something new to try. Cook Unity solves dinner by delivering freshly prepared meals to your door on a weekly basis. With a good variety of meals with over seven different dietary preferences including vegan and gluten-free options. Everything is made fresh in local kitchens and the subscription is super flexible. You can choose to pause or skip weeks when it doesn't fit your schedule or cancel at any time. You can enjoy the delicious beef bibimbap made by Chef Esther Che with the savory marinated beef and tasty mix of veggies. Or try Chef Lamara Davidson's hearty on Dewey, chicken and shrimp gumbo made with love. There are so many options to choose from. The best thing about Cook Unity is that it makes life so simple. Meals are delivered fully cooked and all you have to do is heat it up. So no more messy cooking instructions that make you dirty all the bowls in the house. Clean up is a breeze. Go to cookunity.com slash brew50 or click the link in the description below and use our code brew50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself. For Laura Barajas, a 40-year-old woman from sunny San Jose, California, her world was turned upside down when she decided to make herself fish for dinner. Fresh tilapia she had bought from the local market. Little did she know, this seemingly innocuous dinner choice would set off a chain of events that would reshape the rest of her life. Uh oh. Just a day after consuming the undercooked tilapia, Laura fell terribly ill. Within no time, she was put into a medically induced coma with her fingers, feet, and even her bottom lip turning black. That's not good. No, it is not. Wait, did he just- She was in full-blown sepsis, and her kidneys were shutting down. The doctors were in a race against time. 
and to save Laura's life, they had to make a difficult decision, amputating all four of her limbs to stop the infectious disease from spreading. The initial diagnosis was that the infection was caused by Vibrio vilnificus, known more commonly as flesh-eating bacteria, that causes serious infections spreading quickly in the body, killing about one in five people. But, but how, how did the, the bacteria, bacteria get, get into, into the, the tilapia? tilapia? Whoa, freaky. Well, as the sea warms from May to October, coastal waters are bubbling with activity, especially for multiplying bacteria like Vibrio that thrives in seawater and can easily spread to fish and shellfish. And when your seafood is raw or undercooked, it can be deadly. Earlier this summer, a Missouri man died from contracting the bacteria after eating raw oysters from a seafood stand, as well as two men from Connecticut and another case from New York. So we know this definitely isn't a one-off incident. When it gets into the human body, flesh-eating bacteria can lead to necrotizing fasciitis, a severe infection where the flesh around an open wound dies. This process happens fast, resulting in the infected parts of the body turning black. When it gets to this point, the only next step is removal of the infected parts before it continues to spread throughout the body. Even with treatment, it can lead to organ failure and even death. While people typically contract Vibrio from raw or uncooked seafood, even an open wound as minor as a cut or a fresh tattoo can become a gateway. Laura's recovery will be an arduous process. Having just started rehabilitation, she's under the attentive care of a dedicated medical team. While there seems to be some dispute whether her necrotizing fasciitis was caused by Vibrio or another bacteria, her story is a reminder that food safety is mortally important. This reminds me, Howard, pause. I've always wondered why modern humans today have to cook most meat, but early homo sapiens, before discovering fire, ate meat raw all the time, and they were fine. Searching? No, they were not fine. They were riddled with parasites. You can eat raw meat too if you would like to be riddled with parasites. No, I'm good, thank you. A 62-year-old woman had been suffering from a persistent and debilitating cough that caused her breathing issues and an inability to do certain things. Like blowing up a balloon for her grandson that plagued her life for almost 30 years. Doctors couldn't figure out the source of her breathing problems. So Blanca Riveron just lived with it and frequently got treated for pneumonia and asthma. However, after Blanca began coughing up blood, imaging revealed a dark shadow within one of Blanca's lungs, a mass that could be life-threatening, and doctors hypothesized the worst, lung cancer. After she received her diagnosis, Blanca reached out to her daughter, Melody, who, in a quick flashback, recalled one sunny day in 1984, when her mother had an outburst at the children and inadvertently swallowed a seed from the fruit she was eating, an asparo. Asparo, also known as loquat, has seeds roughly the size of a grape. And Melody pointed to the long-forgotten seed as the source of the shadow. But Blanca dismissed the idea. That was 28 years ago. It simply couldn't be. I bet it could. Could it? Yes. Well, to address this mysterious mass, Blanca underwent two endoscopy procedures in preparation for a major surgery. But just before this surgery, something unexpected happened. While sitting at a traffic light, a violent coughing fit led Blanca to expel the very same Nespero seed from almost three decades ago. Bingo. Suddenly, everything clicked into place. The supposed cancer, the breathing issues, the decades-long mystery of the never-ending cough, all boiled down to this tiny intruder. With the seed gone, Blanca's health saw a monumental shift. Her declaration, I can breathe, I can sleep, my life has changed completely, is a testament to the profound relief she felt. What a relief? Seeds can't grow inside you. <laughs> uh, Howard? Howard? Oh no, please. In 2010, a 75-year-old man inhaled a pea that later sprouted inside his lung. That's terrifying. Yes. Would you like to know the most humorous part? There's a humorous part? After the successful pea plant removal surgery, the hospital served him a meal with a side of peas. Ha ha. Hmm. 
Our next story is about a boy who was sent to his early grave by a single chip. You've probably heard about Pocky's spicy one chip challenge, no. where after eating a single hot chip, a person has to refrain from reaching for relief as long as they can manage. The chip turns your tongue blue after eating it, and the one who can prove that they have a blue tongue for the longest, before rushing to get ice cream or milk to wash away the hot aftertaste, beats the challenge. And there's a reason why Pocky's individually packaged chips come in an ominous coffin-shaped container container with a large warning section on the back and a logo depicting a snake wrapped around a melting red skull. The booklet in the back even challenges Face the Reaper. The chip made this year uses two of the hottest peppers in the world as seasoning, the Carolina Reaper and the Naga Viper, burning your tongue and throat while you try to stand the smoldering sensation. To put things into perspective, the Carolina Reaper rates at an impressive 1.7 million units on the Scoville heat scale, while the Naga Viper is rated around 1.4 million. Meanwhile, the jalapeno pepper, which most people are familiar with, caps out at a much milder 8,500 Scoville units. A 10-year-old girl in Florida was suspended from school when the chip that she brought got six students sent to the nurse's office. And Harris Woloba learned the real-world effects a single ultra-spicy chip could have on our bodies the hard way. The 14-year-old sophomore was given the chip by a classmate to do the one-chip challenge at school and had to make a trip to the nurse with a severe stomach ache. The concerned nurse notified his mother, and Harris returned back home after school was over for the day. The young teen was supposed to be leaving soon for basketball tryouts that evening, but his brother found him passed out in the house. Harris was rushed to the hospital, but it was too late. The teenager was pronounced dead within the same day. The autopsy didn't reveal the cause of death. Reacting to the tragedy, Packy, which is under the umbrella of the Hershey Company, took a step back by pulling the infamous chip off of the shelves. The website warns that the one chip challenge is intended for adults only, with the clear and prominent labeling highlighting the chip is not for children or anyone sensitive to spicy foods or has food allergies, is pregnant, or has underlying health conditions. Packy explained that they have seen an increase in teens and other individuals not heeding these warnings, and as a result, they have been working with retailers to remove the product from shelves as a precautionary measure offering a refund for people who've purchased the chip. Howard, is the Carolina Reaper the hottest pepper? Searching? No. It was recently usurped in October by over a million Scoville. The pepper, named Chili Pepper X, was grown by Pucker Butt Pepper Company, who also developed the Carolina Reaper ten years ago. Why do you humans spend so much time finding new ways to cause yourselves pain? Funny, I was going to ask you the same question. While eating junk food is a bad enough habit when it isn't designed to hurt you, the subject of our next story shows that even good habits can become life-threatening with just one mistake. A 20-year-old student had made the smart choice of meal prepping and was eating some of the spaghetti he had made earlier that week. The student then left home to exercise, but had to rush back half an hour later feeling unwell. He was overcome with a sudden headache, abdominal pain, and nausea. After returning home, he started throwing up profusely for several hours and had a couple episodes of watery diarrhea. Dejected, the young man decided to just go to sleep hoping to have a better tomorrow. But he wouldn't have a tomorrow. The next morning, his parents got worried when it was already 11 a.m. and their normally active son didn't emerge from his room. So they checked on the 20-year-old in his room only to find him dead. He never woke up. But why? An autopsy revealed the presence of Bacillus cereus, a notorious pathogen, which produced two types of toxins that can affect the liver, causing it to shut down. It explained the liver necrosis, but where did the pathogen come from in the first place? B. cereus poisoning is usually foodborne, so the answer would be found in what the student had eaten last. Before leaving home for basketball tryouts, the young man had reheated some leftover spaghetti and tomato sauce in the microwave. He thought it tasted a bit funky but shrugged and ate the whole thing. The student had a habit of cooking and food prepping in batches so that he wouldn't have to think about what to make during the week. He would just add sauce to the already cooked spaghetti and heat it up. This spaghetti was prepared five days before the incident and then left on the kitchen counter at room temperature instead of being refrigerated. And this choice to leave it out had been a grave mistake. Forensics placed the time of death around 4 a.m., approximately 10 hours after eating the pasta. Similar cases of food poisoning with B. cereus have killed before, and is often referred to as fried rice syndrome, because it's commonly linked to rice that has been prepared and then left standing at room temperature for several hours to cool down before it's stored. In such conditions, if contaminated with B. cereus, the microorganism can spread quickly. Starchy foods like rice and pasta 
helps the bacteria to become heat resistant and therefore not die when the food is reheated. So, how do we prevent this from happening with leftovers in our homes? Cooked food needs to be chilled promptly after being cooked. Leftovers should not be left out at room temperature for more than two hours, especially if the dish contains meat. If you thaw frozen food as a rule of thumb, cook it instead of throwing it back in the freezer. And if it smells or tastes funny, it's best to just chuck it out. Huh, is it weird that I'm hungry right now? You have been awake for 17 consecutive hours. During that time, you have drank 16 cups of coffee and eaten nothing. You know what, Howard? You're right. I should have another cup of coffee.